Hello, hello, and welcome to part two of my review of the accuracy of the first five episodes of Dinosaur King. To recap, in the previous part I went over the dinosaur designs of the first five episodes and ranked them based on their accuracy when compared to more modern dinosaur designs. Here I'll be going over the episodes themselves, so strap in. Strap yourself in, because you're about to be edumacated. The first episode, called Prehistory in the Making, introduces us to the main characters, the villains and the dinosaurs. This episode makes a few annoying errors whilst getting like one or two things right according to my research. So the first major oof of the series is this split second scene where they show the meteor and the dinosaurs right at the very beginning of episode one. The meteor hit 66 million years ago and Spinosaurus died out roughly 90, 93.5 million years ago and lived in Africa. I'm assuming that since Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops and Parasaurolophus are shown here, this is meant to be North America. Another one is Cychania, which lived in Mongolia and from what I know, died out about 70 million years ago, which is 4 million years before the meteor hit. There's also Carnotaurus, which lived in South America, and then you have Seismosaurus, which died out about 144 million years ago in the Jurassic period, and sadly, for those who liked Seismosaurus, it's now considered a subspecies of Diplodocus. So in other words, what should be shown here, if this is meant to be the North American Hell Creek Formation, Edmontosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, Alamosaurus, Dakotaraptor, Ankylosaurus, and Pachycephalosaurus. I'm guessing what happened here was the animators just grabbed whatever models they had ready and threw them in. Also, when I said earlier the meteor hit 66 million years ago, I didn't misread that. Due to more refined technology, we found that the meteor hit closer to 66 million years ago than 65. Anyway, alongside that, I reckon that when main villain Dr. Z is chased by Terry, I reckon Terry should have been able to easily catch him. Tyrannosaurus might not have been the fastest when compared to other theropods, but I doubt you could outrun one. And even if you could, the thing was built for endurance, so you're screwed anyway especially when you're a cranky old dinosaur yourself. Speaking of dinosaurs, they couldn't roar. The animals of today that can roar are mammals such as big cats of the panthera family and bears. And the reason why they can roar is because we have these complicated voice boxes designed for this, which reptiles lack, meaning dinosaurs most likely couldn't roar. But this obviously happens a lot throughout the show. You ruined the moment again. I was making the moment more epic. If I could find his neck, I'd strangle him. Another scene later on involves Tyrannosaurus Rex swimming, which when going off of Prehistoric Planet is definitely accurate. However, with Prehistoric Planet, Hank the Tank swims on top of the water, kicking his legs. Meanwhile, Dinosaur King's Tyrannosaurus moves in these snake-like motions. I think we can all agree that Tyrannosaurus would have most likely been able to swim, but not like what Dinosaur King shows. The final thing I want to point out for this episode is a bit of dialogue where Rex says that Triceratops could never beat a Tyrannosaurus. Nothing to see here! Please disperse! Nothing to see here! One, there's like several scenes throughout this show that say otherwise, and two, there are Triceratops fossils with Tyrannosaurus bite marks that show signs of healing, meaning that these Triceratops is most likely either drove off the predator, got away or killed it, meaning that if they did kill it, a Triceratops can actually beat a T-Rex. Tyrannosaurus wasn't this god-like figure of a monster that only another of its kind could match. Even the most powerful predators of today's ecosystems are or can be beaten by animals in their ecosystem. I mean, lions are powerful animals, but they live in the same ecosystem as hippos, rhinos and elephants which are dangerous prey items for a lion. The same way Ankylosaurus, Alamosaurus and Triceratops are dangerous animals for Tyrannosaurus to hunt. Now on to episode two, Battle at the Pyramids, where our heroes go to Egypt upon detecting a Spinosaurus appearing. <coughs> and we're also introduced to Paris and Ace for the first time. And we also get the cringiest scene of this entire show. What makes dinosaurs extinct? Not taking a bath, we think. Dig it. 
actually, now that I think about it. Now that TikTok is more prominent than ever, I think this scene isn't as cringe as I think it is. Even though they are using these move cards that allow the dinosaurs to do crazy stuff, one thing that should be noted is that Triceratops most likely didn't ram their opponents. It's believed that if two Triceratopses rammed each other head-on, they'd break their skulls. And this would also most likely be the case if it were to ram heads with a Tyrannosaurus. It's believed that in Triceratops on Triceratops combat, they would have locked horns like moose do. Perhaps Triceratops lunged in short jabs when facing a Tyrannosaurus, attempting to stab its opponent, instead of just saying f*** it and kamikaze ing to maintain honour for the Emperor. We'll probably never know how it fought Tyrannosaurus, but the way we know it wouldn't fight by charging like a rhino is because we're talking a much larger animal than a rhino. And when you factor in that whole thing of 2 tons becomes 2,000 tons of force when going at the right speed, you can easily see why this wouldn't be possible. Especially when according to one of my sources of research, one study found that Triceratops could reach similar speeds to a black rhinoceros, which is about 55 kilometers an hour if I remember correctly. Also, who's paying for the damage these dinosaurs caused? The third episode, Tanks A Lot, shows the Cyclania tank running rampant in a museum in London. One thing I want to point out that I should have with episode 1 and 2 is that I wouldn't be surprised if Max, Rex, and Zoe started up the bloody lockdowns since they are risking the entire world population dying from disease so that way they can have dinosaurs as pets. God knows what sort of diseases were around back then that aren't around now, which have been brought back because of Chomp, Ace, and Paris. And this also works in reverse, since dinosaurs wouldn't be used to our diseases either, meaning both them and us would all die. Though again, considering people actually use TikTok, that might not be a bad thing. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Max's dad, who's a supposed dinosaur expert, states that Cyclanias lived near water and they show this still image. According to what I've read, Cyclanias lived in deserts, not something that looks like a jungle. You'd probably find they would congregate around water holes if possible, however, so I'll let him off for now. I'm going to make sure to listen closely to what he says, since he's meant to be a dinosaur expert. So you'd be thinking that this now bankrupt company that was totally just out for money would put some effort into research, wouldn't they? I'm guessing Chomp showing affection for this Triceratops sculpture is meant to indicate Triceratops being a social animal, and in later episodes you'll see this more often, when Chomp befriends various Ceratopsians. However, apart from three juveniles being found together, Triceratops is found with no other individuals of the same species present, meaning there's no current fossil evidence for herding in Triceratops. Yeah, it would be nice for them to herd, since it would be easier to protect themselves from predators, However, we're talking big animals here. Weight estimates have ranged from as small as a male African elephant to double that at 12 metric tons. Though from what I know, more modern stuff hovers around 8 and 10 metric tons. Either way, when you're at most twice the size of an African elephant, obviously you're gonna need a lot of food to maintain that size. This means that these animals would mow down large amounts of plants easily and there wouldn't be enough food to go around for a large number of them. So you'd probably find that if they did live in herds, they'd mostly be smaller groups, with larger ones being rarer, only limited to areas where it would be possible to maintain such a large herd size. Also, is Tank having a mental breakdown or something? Why is she just standing there statue still? One thing I find a bit odd is this bit where Paris uses her crest to admit this distress call. The crest of Parasaurolophus was connected to the nasal cavities and is believed to have been used for making sounds. However, it would more likely be used to amplify its own calls, not whatever this is where it seems to admit its own sounds. In some episodes later on, they even show her using this as a sound-based weapon. The sounds would have most likely come out from the mouth or nasal passages, not the crest itself. And realistically, I doubt Parasaurolophus would win against Spinosaurus. However, it isn't exactly inaccurate to show Paris fighting back here, even if it is brief. Hadrosaurs weren't the weak animals they're often thought of as being. 
they were actually just as deadly for predators to hunt as some other prey items, even if they might not have had armour like ankylosaurs or horns like ceratopsians. Anyway, on to episode 4, Bungle in the Jungle, where the D-Team encounter a Saltosaurus in the Amazon. First off, last time I checked, Triceratops was a herbivore, so I don't know how well it would be attracted to dog food, since dogs are carnivores. However, if I remember correctly, either this year or last year a study was released going over the possibility that Triceratops might have been carnivorous to a certain extent, and personally I do agree with the study since videos and pictures crop up of traditionally herbivorous animals eating meat. So it might not be too far of a stretch to say Chomp realises this would give him some nutrients his body needs. Edge did a video going over the study in case you're interested in learning about it. Why the hell is Chomp moonwalking? When Zoe and Rex find the Saltosaurus, Zoe says that she recognises it because of the bony plates on its back. However, this isn't something unique to Saltosaurus to my knowledge. In Darren Nasha's book, Dinopedia, a brief compendium of dinosaur lore, Nash writes that numerous titanosaur species had bony plates, with the belief being that they were used as armour. However, some have proposed the idea they acted as calcium stores for female titanosaurs to aid in production of eggshells. Either way, bony plates aren't a unique feature for Saltosaurus, and were actually something titanosaurs within the group Lithostrotia had, meaning that this isn't a good way to indicate what specific dinosaur species you're looking at, however you will know you are looking at some sort of titanosaur species. I doubt Spinosaurus would be able to jump into the air like this, and if it came down from that high, it would most likely crumple upon impact. I also should have mentioned this earlier in episode 2. Also, from what I could find, sauropods couldn't charge, let alone run, so Saltosaurus probably wouldn't be able to steamroll spiny like this. And I don't know if Saltosaurus in a fight with Triceratops would bite down on Triceratops' frill. According to a video I remember watching from the YouTuber Extinct Zoo, herbivores didn't have great biting power, and according to a video from Ben G. Thomas, sauropod skulls don't fossilise well, and the ones that do aren't that durable, so Saltosaurus probably wouldn't use its head in any form in a fight. And I think from now on I'm not going to bother mentioning that the dinosaurs jump, run and launch each other to heights they wouldn't be capable of, since it's just something that happens throughout the entire show. The final thing I want to point out for this episode is this bit at the end, where Max's dad says the name Saltosaurus translates to lizard from Salter, and Zoe replies saying that means it's a lizard as well, and then Rex follows up by saying that's why Saltosaurus was chasing after a lizard throughout the episode. How the f*** can anyone say that sentence and not think to themselves that's absolutely f***ing ridiculous? Yeah, no. Dinosaurs are in fact reptiles, and lizards are also reptiles, but that doesn't mean lizards are dinosaurs and dinosaurs are lizards. According to a cladogram in the book Complete Illustrated Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs and Prehistoric Creatures by Dougal Dixon, lizards are in a family known as Lepidosauria. Meanwhile, dinosaurs evolved much later in a group called Dinosauria. Lizards are also typically ectothermic, or what's better known as cold-blooded, whilst prehistoric dinosaurs, just like modern dinosaurs, aka the birds, were endothermic, or warm-blooded, and dinosaurs have their legs placed under their hips, while lizards have their legs sprawled out to their sides. Now we're on to episode 5, Rubble Trouble, where the D-Team battle against a Carcrodontosaurus at the Great Wall of China, back before Matt Damon would be in a totally successful movie centred around it. They have a little joke here about how to pronounce Carcrodontosaurus, and if I'm gonna be honest, I think this is the most accurate part of the show. I remember watching one of those top 10 dinosaurs type of videos with my dad, and they had Carcrodontosaurus on the list, and I remember him going to me, how the hell are you meant to pronounce that? Rex makes the claim that Carcrodontosaurus was bigger than T-Rex, which leads me to say that if you've watched my Wild Sciencius video, then there's honestly no point in me ranting about it again. But to put it simply, the only way Carcrodontosaurus was bigger was in length and height, 
but that was a minuscule difference to the point it's not worth counting. And on top of that, Tyrannosaurus was a very robust, very round animal, while Carcodontosaurus was much slimmer. This means that we can safely say Tyrannosaurus would have been the heavier animal. And Zoe also points to the razor sharp teeth before saying it's a Carcodontosaurus. This isn't really an inaccuracy, but I thought it would be an interesting way to give you guys a little lesson behind the name. You see, Carcharodontosaurus's name translates to Shark Toothed Lizard. The Carcharodonto bit in Carcharodontosaurus is actually the name of a shark family known as Carcharodon, which has, to my knowledge, only one living member, Carcharodon carcarius, better known as the Great White. Megalodon was also thought to be in this genus, however it was later moved to a different genus known as Carcharocles. Megalodon has also moved since then again, and now belongs to a family known as Otodus. Anyway, the reason behind the naming Shark Toothed Lizard is because paleontologist Ernst Stromer saw a resemblance between the teeth of Carcharodontosaurus and sharks. So now you can make sure you are considered the dinosaur nerd at the dinner table this Christmas. Also, I just noticed this mistake, where Rex is meant to use an air element move card. You can see the water element symbol on the card. Anyway, I think that's about everything I can find in terms of inaccuracies and accuracies. One thing I also want to note real quick is that I've decided to move Cychania down a tier on the tier list, due to it being oversized and the spikes being too big and sharp. Overall, I'd say when going off of the first five episodes, Dinosaur King hasn't aged well, but hasn't aged as bad as I thought it would have, so it's not completely terrible. Admittedly, there's like 60 or 70 more episodes total when you combine both season 1 and 2, but I'll have to save those for another time. The channel I came across that has the first five episodes also has episodes 6 and 7, which I'll probably cover individually at some point, but after that it might be harder. Most of the other channels that have uploaded the series to YouTube either have it in the Hindi dub or cropped versions of the English dub that glitch out. I do have the first season on DVD, but my PC doesn't have a DVD slot for some weird reason, so I can't get the footage from recording the DVDs, even if I wanted to. Anyway, the next video should be about Argentinosaurus, so until then, have fun and thanks for 200 subscribers.